All drugs should be decriminalized. Here's why. The current war on drugs isn't helping anybody except cartels and privatized prisons. This is due to the nature of drug use. It isn't price sensitive, meaning that people will continue to buy drugs regardless of price. And cartels will continue to traffic drugs no matter how many are stopped at the border because there will always be a demand. So how do we decrease this demand? How do we stop this flow of drugs into our community? This is where decriminalization comes. If we stop prosecuting people for their unhealthy coping and help them to cope using support systems, drug use will go down, we can monitor the use of drugs and ensure that they're taken safe. Privatised prisons earn a disproportionate amount of funding compared to the public prisons in the UK and still manage to provide a sub-level standard of care with ongoing drug use, riots and less experienced staff. After years of having the highest number of drug addicts, with an estimated 1 in 100 people being addicted to some type of substance and the highest HIV infection rate in the EU, Portugal decided that punishment was no longer the way forward. In 2001, Portugal was the first country to decriminalise all personal use of drugs. This didn't lead to people going wild and trying every single drug they, every single drug they could get their hands on. In fact, quite the opposite. A research paper in the five years after drug, the decriminalisation law had passed found that illegal drug use among teens in Portugal declined, with rates of new HIV infection cases dropping from 907 cases to only 17 cases in 2018. And the number of people seeking treatment for their drug addiction more than doubled, all thanks to drop-in centres that provide syringe bins, clean needles and condoms in order to prevent HIV transmission. Critics at the time and the large least uh, the socially conservative, largely Catholic nation said that this would exacerbate the country's drug problem and open it up to drug tourists, but the stats show that this isn't the case. Granted, the UK's drug use is not as prevalent as 2001's Portugal's, um, but I fear that if we feign ignorance and say there's no need for drastic measures, I fear that we'll look back and regret not taking action sooner. It's no secret that Scotland deals with a hard drug problem. Scotland has half the population of Portugal and still and managed to have 16, one, six times more drug-related deaths than Portugal ever did in 2001. It's not from lack of trying from the Scottish government. They have tried to tackle their drug problem. For example, a drug campaign released in 2018 where the minimum alcohol unit price was raised in an effort to stop binge drinking. This was very effective with Scottish drinking hitting an all-time low. But the problem here doesn't lie with the Scottish government, but more with the Home Office, who refuses to allow Scottish powers to vary the 1971 Drugs Act, leaving issues such as decriminalisation and safe consumption rooms all in the hands of Westminster. The same Westminster that rejected recommendations from its own drug advisors on safe consumption rooms, even in the face of evidence that they were. A classic example of local government using their initiative to reform and repair outdated policies that affect their constituents in a very real way, while central government sticks them in a political rut. So this intrigued me. I wanted to know why. Why the government would say no to safe consumption rooms, even when there's evidence that they work. But sadly, all I could find and see were outdated policies of treating criminal as drug addiction as a criminal problem and not as the health problem it is. They took no consideration of the fact that you have to take a much more nuanced approach when it comes to addiction. These are people's lives here. This dismissal of treating drug addiction as a criminal, uh, as a health problem, hints at something much more sinister, as the UK has the highest amount of people in privatised prisons in the entire world. That means that our government has, has put the most people in the hands of a company, which isn't trying to rehabilitate like a prison should, but instead is making a profit off of the backs of the imprisoned. Are we going to continue failing these people just because we can't advance past the blanket statement of all drugs are bad? Or because prison spending has fallen 14%, we're going to turn a blind eye, even with a lack of results? Sadly, people are entering prison with minor criminal convictions, clean, and leaving with drug problems they didn't have before. No, I'm not saying that decriminalisation is a magic strategy that cause addiction and drug use to disappear overnight. But I'm saying, 
Surely, it must be better than throwing people into mediocre prisons, which fail at their main goal of rehabilitation, and hoping that they've learnt their lesson. No, I hope we're better than that, and we start helping some of our most vulnerable. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk.